Invisible Cube, posted November 9th, 2024. So we are in the editor and I have a bunch of examples here. Now this is hard to show you the example, so it might not be exactly what I'm trying to show you, but maybe you'll get the idea. So if you've ever tried to optimize a build, and usually it's, you know, when you're really trying to get a lot of frames per second out of a build because it's built, you know, it's big and complex and there's wedges and there's all that stuff, you may like the invisible cube. Now the physics flutter is gonna come in handy as well, but the invisible cube might be handy for doing kind of like aesthetics by keeping the build looking the same, but you're just trying to like get it to like, just optimize just a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna try to show you, this is hard, but uh, let's go ahead and spawn these. Okay, so we'll start over here. So this one on the left has wedges and blocks, and it has no physics flutter. This one is the same exact build, but it has a physics flutter. Now you see that it's all one piece, which is really nice. Now that rarely happens when you build something like a boat or something, because you have different levels. You have like the, the uh, deck on top. And the way Brooke explained it to me is the game builds from the bottom up, which kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it breaks your brain. So if we come over here, I've got a couple examples here. I got this one here and this one here, okay? We're gonna start with these two. Now, this one has no physics flutter or anything like that, and nor does this. You can see the block is pretty much almost one piece, but it's like sections, right? So what I'm gonna do is add a physics flutter to this one. Let's come in here and add a physics flutter. So we'll just do that, okay? And let's spawn it. Okay, so only the bottom has a physics flutter. Now you'll see, look at that. It's just like that one over there. It's all one piece, except of course, it doesn't do anything for these on top. So let's go ahead and add one up there. Let's see what happens. So we'll add a physics flutter up here and see what happens. Now remember, when you add a physics flutter, you cannot go inside of it. So that's that's kind of a, a problem to you if you're trying to build something. Yeah, so we added one on top, but nothing much has changed, as you can see. Right? Look at that. Nothing much has changed. So let's do the same thing to this one, but let's add some invisible blocks when we do it. So we'll start with this and we'll add it one up there. Okay, but now the difference is let's pretend like this is a giant aircraft carrier and maybe we are using it as a prop, which I will be, and I don't care if people can't go down there. So I'm gonna take the invisible block, which is invisible, but does show a blue outline. And I'm going to go ahead and seal this off here. Okay. Just like that. And one more side. Let's see what happens. I'm not positive, but I think it should be a bit better on the top. Okay. The front, still not so good. But the sides are all one piece. Breaks up there. Let me get my little flashlight here. Breaks up here. The back, all one piece. The side, the same. Okay. So... That's interesting. Let's go ahead and show it off. Okay, so we can see through it, but it is solid. We could not, if this was big enough, we could not walk through it. Is that big enough? Let's see if it's big enough for me. Yeah, I can walk through this one. I cannot walk through this one. The invisible block is a barrier. It does seal, so it doesn't let us walk through. Okay, okay, let me think now. What can we do with this? Let's go back in. All right, so if it builds from the bottom up, can we, where is it? I want to see where it's at. Hold on one second. Okay, so the invisible block starts here, the wall. What if, what if we did something like this? Okay, we could do this with a regular block too, but the idea with the invisible block is it does not add any weight. So let's do that and see what happens. Which one did I do? I don't even know which one I did. I do the right one. Okay, so the physics flutter broke there. Hold on. Let's add another physics flutter in here. Now let's check it. Okay, so we got our solid, um, I think. Okay, so what happened here? So, so I feel like this one goes all the way down. This one is still separate. That was separate before, right? I think so. So let's do something else here. Let's, let's. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna kill this. Let's just experiment here and see if we can get this even better. So there we go. I'm gonna 
let all that loose. So if we go now, there's nothing in between these blocks. Okay, look at this. There we go. That's how we do it. So if we go back into the normal mode, I've emptied this out right here. Okay. And I've sealed it around the edges. So we can't go inside because there's flutters. But the idea here is all I'm trying to do is optimize as many blocks as possible. So I've got rid of all these breakdowns. And now I have one giant physics piece that calculates. That's going to help me. So very cool. So I wonder what we can do if we move this back. I think this is going to happen about the same way, but we'll just check. So let's go ahead. Let's see what we have. We have no physics flutter. No physics flutter. Okay, we'll do physics flutter there. Physics flutter there. And then let's just spawn that. Okay, we got solid there. We got a solid up there. Yeah, we got a solid up there. That's not bad right there. That's that's good enough with the physics flutter, actually. I don't think we're going to get much better than that. We could probably get it to do that, but I don't think it's worth it. But you can see this one, it broke down quite a bit because I think because it overlaps these wedges here a little bit. Does it? Just a little bit. It comes over on the wedges a little bit. So that makes it break up a little bit there. But this one, since it's farther back from the wedges, it's able to complete that top box pretty good. Okay, well, let's just, for the sake of it, let's go ahead and do the invisible blocks here. So we're just going to go ahead and do invisible blocks here. And we know that we can get it super optimized by breaking down the walls. So let's do that. Let's break down the walls. Also, I want to go back to that first one and try something in a minute. Hold on. Let's just break down these walls. Okay. There's no physics flutter in here or anything, right? No, there's not. Okay, let's break down this wall. I know this is not practical for a boat, but the point is I'm trying to show you like how this would seal and how it would keep everything uh, solid. So let's go and look now. What do we got? All right. So this looks good. This is all broken up, and that's because we're not using the physics flutter. So let's do that. Like that. And you can see it's all open here. So physics flutter and invisible blocks. Physics flutter down here. Physics flutter up here. No invisible blocks. So you could go through here, walk through if you wanted. Here you can't walk through. But we're just going for pure optimization and not assuming that people are going to walk around. Okay, let's go ahead and look. And there we go. So we got extra blocks here, of course, because these are separate. And then this one treats it as one volume. And there you go. So it's one solid thing. The physics flutter helps with those. And we get a super optimized, I guess, kind of a super optimized build. That being said, you cannot walk through this volume. So I think what would be great is if the invisible block could go ahead and let you walk through it. That would be really good, right? And I think of if you are building like something like a, a like an open boat, like a little dinghy. I don't even know if it's possible, but say you had a dinghy and you wanted to like have it open like that, then you could do, you know, if it was an invisible sealed area, you could jump in here and, you know, it's still solid. It's not a good example again, but the idea is the invisible block might be handy in very specific cases where you're trying to make enclosed areas connect in some way. So for me, the invisible block is probably useful for the convoy add-on where I have AI ships and no one's on them, but I want to make them as optimized as possible. So I might want to add invisible blocks to go ahead and seal up, you know, open areas like this, where it might look open from like when the ship is going by, but I really want to optimize the ships as much as possible because they're not player ships and they're just props basically that move. So for me, this invisible block might be really good. And for you, it might be something when you're building a ship, you'll come into a very specific instance where you want to enclose an area that might be available to water and you just want to be able to see through it without using a window or something. And maybe you want to add buoyancy or something underneath the bottom of a submarine and you'd still want to, you know, make sure the volumes are as solid as possible. I think that's the best 
scenarios I can think of offhand until I start actually playing with it on using a build. But I think it's kind of a quality of life thing if you're trying to optimize your ship. So that's why I put it in this category. But you can go ahead and give it a try. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the invisible block. I still think that it would be nice to have a version where you can walk through the invisible block, yet have it seal it off. I don't know if that's possible, but yeah, I think that's a good idea. Also, I don't know if I said this already, but the invisible block is currently broken if you download it because the definition file was not put in the definitions folder. It's only in the data folder, so you'll have to manually move it. So FYI, I would comment on the workshop to tell him, but I'm still banned, so I can't do that. So if one of you wants to let him know that his mod is broken, please do so. Pump Direction Arrows, last updated October 31st, 2024. So this is a mod that is an enhancement to existing blocks, to the vanilla blocks. So it does not change any stats or anything like that. All it does is add the arrows, as you can see here, the out arrows and the in arrows to the pumps. So now you can easily see when you place it, which way you are placing it. This one has always been a pain, right? The little guy, you can never tell which was the power, which was the in and the out water. So that's a cool one. Uh, we've got the uh, impeller pump. We've got the hand pump showing you which way the water is flowing. Again, another pump showing the water flowing. And the engine pump showing you which way. Very, very useful. So these do not, again, change any stats. All they do is place the arrows on your vanilla game. This is a very good mod. This is an enhancement to the existing gameplay without changing any functionality. You can download it using the link below. Remove Invisible Hitboxes, first posted November 3rd, 2024, last updated November 5th, 2024. So what this mod does is change a lot of hitboxes, or in fact, all of these items listed here. And I'm not going to show you all these items, but I am going to show you an example of what it does and why you probably want this mod. Let's jump into the editor. Jumping into the editor, I have the panel. This one is our original vanilla panel. These are the brand new panels. You see when I hover over this that the hitbox is now behind it. This one, there is no hitbox. And this one, there is no hitbox. So let's find out why. So let me show you what this is doing by using blocks. So this is our vanilla one. If I go like this, you'll see that I can't place a block in front. Now this one, I can place the block in front, but not the block in back. And this one, what can we do? We can place the blocks all the way around, even on top. Of course, we can do top of these as well, just to show you that. And this last one, we can place all around and on top as well. So you might be wondering, what is this doing to allow this? And why does this one have a hitbox behind? Let me get these cleaned up again, like magic, the undo. And let's go into composite mode. So this is our default block. It has the out and the in and the hitbox is in front. This one swaps it so that the out is in the middle and the in is behind it instead of in front of it, which makes the hitbox come back here. Now these only have an in, so it's letting you use dials if you want or anything that goes in like lights or whatever. And then on this one, we've got out. So this would be used for only buttons and switches. Okay, so it gives you the option to do these three ways. So sometimes you don't need both in and out. And so in that case, you could use one of these, or if you really need in and out, you'll just make space behind it. And then you can do stuff like this. So I could grab this and now I could place it on the side there. Or even if I wanted to do something like this, I can't place it without the, the back one. I could place it like this. And now I've got that. Or if I really didn't want that block down there, I could grab this one, which is, I think, an in. What is this? Yeah, it's an in. And I could have my displays down there. And then, see, I've got all my things here, all next to each other, without the hitboxes. So in the case of a light machine gun, there was a hitbox on the side here. And now there is no hitbox on the side. So he was able to overwrite that hitbox was just was placed there by GM Editor for whatever reason. And so if we go in here and we put this here, you'll see there is the hitbox here with the barrel. Now this gun has been slightly altered and it is a new version of the original that does have the hitbox on the side removed. But I believe if we come to the front of the gun, it's gonna be able to go through here. So we're gonna be able to put our barrel inside the wing of a plane or something like that. So 
the hitbox can be hidden all the way like that. So that's the difference. This is the original hitbox on the side removed. The barrel still has a hitbox. In the case of this one, he's removed the hitbox so you can bury your guns inside of a wing or whatever. And you can do that. In the case of the bed, you can see that the old bids had a giant hitbox so that you could not <laughs> stack these like this. In fact, it was quite frustrating because if you had like a roof, say, if you had a roof like this, you could never, could never have a bunk bed that was very tight. It was like three blocks up or something. I don't even know how big a block it was. But if you want to find these, the author does use the RH tag for his blocks. So if we look at these, remove hitbox, you can see that it has the uh, bracket RH bracket space seat. And so you'll be able to easily find out which of these are made by the RH guy. So remove hitboxes, you can use it using the download link below.